What's up guys? Let's talk about acids and bases. As usual, please hit the subscribe button and smash that like button if you like this video. Uh, we're going to spend a couple of minutes just quickly talking about uh, what we define, how we define an acid and a base, and um, two specific of, uh, definitions that have evolved over the years. Um, so we're going to start with the Arrhenius definition. Now back way back in the 19th century, uh, Arrhenius, Svante Arrhenius, who was a Swedish chemist, and he did, among other things, some experiments around acids and bases. Um, the, the words acids and alkali, which is what uh, we used to call bases, those words were used uh, quite commonly, but what uh, Arrhenius wanted to do was really come up with a, de a definition that would, uh, would, would describe what was going on. So Arrhenius defined an acid as anything that produces H plus ions in solution. Okay? The in solution thing is really important because what it means is that in order for something to be an acid, uh, it has to be dissolved in water. Okay, so we we know acids. We've used acids before. We learned about acids when we uh, first learned how to write formulas, and uh, we know that uh, an acid contains an anion like chloride or sulfate or chlorate or acetate, and then the cation is H plus. And when, we also know that when we put something into water that's made of ions, uh, it splits. Remember when we, we looked at how acids conduct electricity, and they conduct electricity because when you put them in water, they split into positive and negative charges, and that allows the electrons to be conducted through the, the solution. So an acid is only an acid, according to Svante Arrhenius, an acid is only an acid when you put it into water and it splits into the ions that it's made of, and some of those ions are H+. Okay, and it won't do anything unless uh, the H plus ions are there and, and available. Uh, according to Arrhenius, a base is anything that, when you put it into water, produces hydroxide ions. So sodium hydroxide or lithium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide or aluminum hydroxide, all of those, when you dissolve them in water, they split into their ions, and one of those ions is the hydroxide ion. And so that would be considered a base. Now, this is kind of narrow because there are things that are bases that don't have hydroxide in them at all. So this definition works, and it's a very simple definition, and you can still use it to identify acids and bases, but it's not as complete as it could be. Okay, um, This is basically what's going on here. So we have uh, hydrochloric acid, right, uh, which as a gas, before it's put into water, is called hydrogen chloride. It's just a molecule. It's not acting as an acid. When you put it into water, it splits into H plus and Cl minus. And so there's your H plus ions. Arrhenius would say this is an acid. It produced H plus in solution. Sodium hydroxide, the solid, isn't doing anything. It's a solid ionic compound. But when you put it into water, it splits into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And it's those hydroxide ions in the water, in the solution, that make that a base according to Arrhenius, okay? So what do we mean by H plus anyway? So what is H plus? Well, if a hydrogen atom has a proton and an electron, one proton positive, one electron negative, they cancel each other out, neutral charge, right? If it has a plus charge, we know that it has a plus charge because it lost an electron. Hydrogen's in group one, it likes to lose electrons. So a hydrogen ion is made of one proton and no electrons. In other words, another word for H plus ion is a proton. It's just a plain old proton, right? So fast forward a little bit to the 1920s. Two guys, Nicholas Bronsted, who was a Danish chemist, and Martin Lauer, he was English, redefined acids and bases to be a little bit more of a wider definition that would uh, be able to include compounds that didn't necessarily fit Arrhenius's definition, but that were actually experimentally determined to be acids or bases. So Bronsted and Lowry said that an acid was anything that could donate a proton. Well, if you think about it, H plus is a proton, so anything that could give H plus. Okay, that sounds like Arrhenius. It's just a little bit slightly different wording. There's an important difference coming up though. Um, and then Bronsted and Lowry said that a base was anything that could accept a proton. That's very different. Okay, uh, It has nothing to do with hydroxides anymore. It has to do with whether or not the substance, 
can take an H plus and add it to itself, can bond to an H plus. I'll show you an example of something um, that will do that that is not in fact uh, hydroxide containing. So a couple differences. Uh, for one thing, the Bronsted-Lowry definition does not require that acids and bases be dissolved, right? So they don't have to be dissolved in water to act as an acid or base. They just either need to be able to donate a proton or accept a proton. It doesn't have to happen in water. It often does, but it doesn't have to. But here's the thing. Anything that's considered to be an Arrhenius acid and base is still also a Bronsted Lowry. Uh, but here's the thing. Anything that is considered to be an Arrhenius acid and base is also considered to be a Bronsted Lowry acid and base. Okay? But the opposite isn't true. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples and show you how that statement in yellow um, actually applies. Okay? So we're going to take a look at just a couple of examples and I'll show you what I mean by. Um, proton acceptor and proton donor, and how it doesn't necessarily have to be Arrhenius in order to, to work. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so we know that uh, HCl, when I put it into water, splits into H plus and Cl minus. Well, the H plus, that's a proton. Okay, so both according to Arrhenius and according to Bronsted and Lowry, uh, HCl would be considered to be an acid because it is giving a proton up, that's Bronsted Lowry, and it's producing H plus in solution, which is Arrhenius. Okay? Uh, if I have something like sodium hydroxide, okay, where I know NaOH can in water split into Na plus and OH minus, both of those are aqueous. Okay. According to uh, Arrhenius, that is a base, right? This is a base here because it produces uh, hydroxide, right? But why is it also a base according to Bronsted and Lowry? There's no um, accepting of a proton. Well, if you look at hydroxide, OH minus, OH minus can take a proton, right? This is a proton. And what happens when I put OH minus and H plus together? I get H2O, right? So that right there is a proton accepting. And if it's a proton acceptor, it's a base, okay? So sodium hydroxide produces hydroxide in solution, Arrhenius base. But it also, the hydroxide also accepts a proton. That's, that means it's in Bronsted-Lowry base. Okay? Now, here's an example of something that doesn't uh, have hydroxide in it, but is still a base. Okay? So, in order to do this, we have to think a little bit uh, outside the box here. So, here is a compound, NH3. Okay? We know that NH3 that's called ammonia. That's a molecular compound. If I draw the structure of ammonia, I can draw a Lewis structure. It looks like this. All right? You can look back at your Lewis structure lecture and you can do this and you can figure it out. Okay? So, uh, according to um, Arrhenius, Arrhenius definition doesn't cover this at all. Um, this does not, when I put it into water, it doesn't give up H plus, it doesn't release a hydrogen, and it also doesn't contain hydroxide. So, uh, but it is in fact a base. Okay? Ammonia is a base. So how is this a base if it doesn't uh, contain hydroxide? Well, if I put this into water, okay, here's what happens to it. I can add an H plus to this thing. See that pair of electrons right there? That pair of electrons can make a bond to that hydrogen. And it makes the ammonium ion. Okay? Well, that means that this is a proton acceptor. There's my proton. 
it's accepting the proton. If it's a proton acceptor, then it's a base. So according to Arrhenius, ammonia is nothing. It's not an acid or a base. But according to Bronsted Lowry, because it can accept a proton, it's actually a base. And we know it's a base. I'll tell you how we know it's a base in another lecture. Okay? So the Arrhenius acids and bases are the easiest ones to figure out. Obviously, if you see a, something that has hydroxide in it, you know it's a base. And if it starts with H, you know that that means it's an H plus, it's going to be an acid. So we already know that. That's pretty easy. Bronsted Lowry acids and bases are a little harder because, not the acids so much, because most of the acids that we know um, also contain that H plus, right? That's how they give the proton. Uh, but the bases are a little bit trickier, but we're not going to see too many of those. I just, I just wanted you to know why ammonia is basic, even though it doesn't contain hydroxide. Okay, so make sure you take good notes, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next lecture.